Hey everyone, I'm Nicholas and welcome back to Production Bot 101. In this episode, we're talking everything about recording with the Production Bot. Now there's three kind of ways that we like to record with Production Bot. Two of those are with vMix internally and then the third one uses vMix, uh, but it's a separate thing that's actually doing the recording. So you can, uh, whether you need this for production, you know, you're actually doing a live stream and you need to do a record with it, or you know if you just have to do a camera shoot, you can bring your cameras into vMix, record, do uh, whatever you need to do. It's really nice and really versatile. So honestly, let's just hop into it. Let's go over to vMix here. And look, if you look at the bottom, you'll have, you will get to see the two options for recording vMix. We have record and we have the multi-quarter. They're both uh, for separate things. And they both have different roles. Uh, so first let's look at record. It's kind of the one that we generally like to use. With the recorder in vMix, you have two separate uh, channels that you can record with. Channel two, you have to enable it. It's not enabled by default. Uh, so I can just enable it and be good. Uh, and then with this, you have, you can record any of your four different outputs. So I can choose an output for record one. Generally, I like to use output one because that's what I'm doing for program anyways. And so I'll just do a local H.264 record. And then two could be either a program clean record or something else really uh, that we need. Uh, with this also, you can record in different containers. So I can do an AVI, WMV, MP4. I can also do an FFmpeg and I can do a ProRes record on this, which is really nice. So if we need that really nice high quality, we can do that with vMix. Uh, I can also choose where uh, I send these. So I can choose the file location. So if I browse here, I have this set up. I can choose this ex external drive, test here, and I'll save this. And now what this actually was is this is the Hotswap SSD uh, drive right here is what I just chose. So again, like we talked about, say that I'm on site with clients, uh, I just do record, pop it out, I can give it to them. I don't have to transfer anything. It's nice and fast like that. Um, there's another nice thing you can do is you can change uh, every new file. You can have a new file every blank minutes. You can have it every no minutes, so it's just one record, or you can have it chop up to like five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, 15, 20, 30, 60. It's really nice for those, if you have a really long shooter, if you have a really, if you're doing ProRes records, it's really nice to break it up into those times and then you can just edit them together and post later on. It's really nice just for saving file space and not having to deal with just one giant record. Because say something might crash and fail, then you would lose that part of a recording. And if you lose that and it doesn't save, you've lost everything. Versus where if it's saving in chunks, you didn't lose everything, just uh, a certain amount. So I can have output one uh, with my first record. Second record, I can be whatever I want it to be. We'll do output three for this. Exact same thing, change the setting, choose where I want to go. So in this case, we'll go to this. I'll choose the extern the uh, SSD, choose that, save that, and we're all good to go. I can also choose uh, with this, we talked about the file, um, how often it cuts and makes a new file. I can choose the frame rate, the bit rate, what profile it uses. I can also choose the uh, audio channels for it. So I can have master, I can record a certain bus, I can record multiple buses. Uh, the really nice thing about multiple buses is that these will technically be a multi-track. So what I've tested and done is I can bring timecode into this over XLR, and then I can just record that on a separate track, and then I can bring that into uh, my editor, um, video editor software, and I can, with some, you can use an audio track for timecode because uh, vMix itself won't record to a certain to a time code, but I can set time code with that, and I thought that was a really cool thing that you can do uh, with this. And that's kind of enough about the normal record. Let's go next to the multi-quarter. So multi-quarter is right here. I click on the cogwheel again. This lets us configure it. Same thing as recorder. I can choose AVI, uh, MKV, MP4, FFmpeg for ProRes. I can choose any of them. I can also record, again, here you see the four outputs, the folder path, uh, and I can also, and I can change that, do a, a WAV file when recording, which is nice, you can do that with the recorder as well. So you can record an ISO, an audio file, which is really cool. Um, but with the multi-quarter, you see the outputs, and it also will record any camera inputs or NDI inputs. So I can, if I leave this multi-quarter for now, we'll come right back. And I will come here and I'll choose my odd number camera. So I'll choose one, three, and five. Nothing's connected, but you'll still see in the multi-quarter that they will still show up. 
So here we have one, three, and now this is five. So now if I come back to the multi-quarter settings, uh, look, those got added. I can check those. We'll want to record these. They're all recording the same thing. And the thing that's not as nice about this as is with the normal recorder is for the audio, you can either record the inputs audio or the master. And this applies for every single input. So basically the input would be the ISO audio for each of them if you have audio being embedded on those lines uh, or just the master if you don't care about that and you just have one master audio. And again, you can do new file every blank minute, so on and so forth. Um, and that's really it with the multi-quarter. Then you can just uh, start the record by clicking either of them. So I can click multi-quarter. Let's see if I need to click the recorder as well. We're doing that. And then when you're actually recording with the recorder, you'll get a time down here that shows how long you've been recording. So you can see how long the actual recording's been going for. And you click it again to stop it. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you that once you're recording, you cannot change settings for the recorder but in the multi-quarter, so you can still get in here, you just can't change your audio. So I'll stop that, we're all good, and I'll stop the other record, and we're good with that. Now, so I talked about those two were the first two ways. Now, the third way that we generally use recorder uh, with this is we'll have an external recorder. So with the external recorder, what we will do is we'll have it external out of vMix, and then it'll go to, say, uh, Blackmagic Hyperdeck. That's what we like to use for recording our studio. I'm actually doing that right now for this. So it's really simple to do that. For uh, vMix, you have to go and do some configuration. So in here, I currently have output one is the output. That's what I want. Now, if I go to the external output, we'll see that external render is enabled. We have Corvid 88 output seven, and we're also using the master audio. So that all looks good. So now if we come back to v, uh, the production bot here, you'll see that this right here, this is the SDI that the uh, feed would be coming from. And then I can just take an SDI, connect that, and then connect it to another HyperDeck and record it externally away from this. Uh, all I have to do is enable the external, then it'll actually be going out that line. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned a bit about how you can really uh, use recording with production bot. You don't even need to stream. You can just use it for recording, uh, for any show that you're doing or anything on site, you don't need to live stream, you can record and it'll be good and you have multiple ways of doing that. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.